Hi everyone. Thank you for watching this video about the evolution of orcas, apex predators. After being all over the world to explore the hunting strategy of different populations of orcas, it's interesting to see how the orcas have been evolving in the history. First of all, some generality about evolution of Earth. Everything started with the Big Bang almost 15 billion of years ago. The first galaxy occurred 100 million of years later. Then the stars or planet Earth started to be about 4.6 billion of years ago. Life on Earth occurred 1 billion years later. It was monocellular organisms. And we had to wait until 1.3 billion of years ago to see the pluricellular organisms. Then life went to mollusks, the shell, and life get out of the water of the sea of the ocean to invade the land. 300 million of years ago was the reign of the dinosaurs. And this reign ended 65 million of years ago, and then came the mammals. The first humanoids appeared about 4 million of years ago, and all species, Homo sapiens sapiens, came 200,000 years ago. Then came the Ice Age, which ended 10,000 of years ago, and came the civilization, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, until the Christ era, 2,000 of years ago. All this time, we have seen on Earth five mass extinctions. The last one, the sixth, we know now for sure, has started 200 years ago. And this extinction is called Holocene, is due to humans' activities. All the living organisms since the pure beginning has the same existence. First is the birth, then is the life, and aging ending up to death. All living organisms give to the next generation their characteristic through what we call the genome. And everything started in the place of the cell in the monocellular organism called the nucleus. In the nucleus is the chromosomes, and chromosomes contain the DNA. All the genetic characteristics each organism have are encoded in this DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. The structure of this DNA is made of a backbone, made of sugar and phosphate, and nitrogenous bases. They form a very long chain containing all the codes of our body, of our physiology. This is what we call heredity. We give to the next generation the characteristic of the parents. But if the living organisms give to the next generation their body characteristic, we should be in a situation where it will be only monocellular organisms and only one species, the first one. And the reason why the evolution made all these species and all this biodiversity is because it has been changement between two generations, and this changement we call mutation. What is a mutation? A mutation is a mistake when the DNA replicates for the next generation. And we are now in a situation in the planet, we have many, many species of insects, many species of microalgae, of plants, of animals. All of these organisms are organized in population. These populations are organized in community. These communities are organized in ecosystem. And all of this is called the biosphere, meaning all the organisms living on Earth. All these species all together are what we can call the environment. And this environment has also an effect on the living organism. For instance, you see that this giraffe can survive because they have a long neck compared to the other grass eater. If there is no more grass down in the, in the floor, at least the giraffe, they can eat the tree. This is what we call natural selection. The environment push the species to evolve with a natural selection. But the selection is not always natural. Selection can be also because of humans. 30,000 of years ago, it was a species living close to the humans called the wolf. And for any reason, the wolf connected and interacted with humans, with prehistoric humans. It was during the Ice Age, maybe because these two species, they needed to help each other, and some families of wolves became dogs. And 30,000 years later, we have maybe more than 300 different registered races of dogs. 
This is not because of natural selection. This is because of breeding. For instance, to see, to understand what selection is and also the artificial selection, selection by breeding. Here is Horan von Graffat, which was the first German shepherd registered in the, in the original book. It was in 1895. This one is called Ralph Onasbrucker. 50 years of breeding of selection has changed totally the body in this dog. And now the current German shepherd look like this. So in a little bit more than 100 years, we can change totally the shape of the one animal just by breeding, by using the selection. The trophic chain is an organized system, and we know that the top predators are keeping the biodiversity by putting pressure on some species that could invade the ecosystem and take all the food. But it's not the lonely action of the predation. Predation is also a system selecting the prey. For instance, you can see that there is different colors of mice walking in the ground, but of course, the dark one will have a kind of camouflage because the floor is dark. This is why the raptor will easily target the white one. The environment and the predation make this species vulnerable for the predation. And so the dark one are selected and it's gonna be more dark one, even if at the beginning it was less dark one. This is the role of predation in the ecosystem, keeping the biodiversity and giving a natural selection. So has evolved the life on Earth since the beginning, and all the cetaceans we know now are coming from a common ancestor called Mesonyx. And it was a kind of small horse, and he was living in a mangrove, land-based, and eating fish, so he had to go back in the sea to find fish. Of course, the body was not adapted to live in the sea, and evolution and natural selection, especially to find the food, push the Mesonyx to evolve. He had to be more and more adapted generation after generation. We can see that the body of this species will evolve and also the locomotion of this uh, species will, will evolve. Such as uh, the Mesonyx, you see that generation after generation, the tail start to extend. He used more and more the tail for pelvic paddling and less and less the legs. This species became Mysticetis and Odontocetis, the two uh, families of the Cetaceans. Uh, they are um, using this caudal undulation for moving. Coming from this lonely species, the ancestor called Mesonyx, we have today more than 60 different species of cetaceans. The Mysticetis, they are the baleen whale, they are filtering the water and eating the krill, or the humpback whale are eating also the herrings. Or the Odontocetis with teeth. Among the Odontocetis, we have now orcas, but the evolution is not a system which is static. And the changement, the mutation, are really a small mutation generation after generation. It's not visible from one generation to the others. But in the long range of time, we can see the difference of the body. What happened since 800,000 years now is that we can see that the orcas also started to evolve depending on the place of the world they are. We can observe some difference between the different population of orcas we have. It can be a dorsal Thin, more banded or straight. It can be uh, the shape, it can be the shape of the melon, it can be also um, the colors. Some orcas, they are more grayish, yellowish. It can be the size of the eye patch. We have what we call ecotypes of orcas in the North Hemisphere and in the South Hemisphere. Let's go in British Columbia, where we have three ecotypes of orcas. First of all, it are the resident. The resident are split in two populations, the northern and the southern resident. The second ecotypes are the transient, also called the big skill whales. And the big skill whales are eating the marine mammals. And there is a third ecotype called offshore. This one are living out in open sea. We know few about them, except that they are eating sharks. We don't know if they are eating only sharks, but we have observation of offshore eating the sharks. Other ecotypes in the North Hemisphere are the ecotypes in the North Atlantic. There is ecotype one, eating fish. These are the orcas we are diving with, and they are split in two populations in Norway and in Iceland. These two populations have common part of genetic, but a different language, and they don't interact when they meet each other in open sea between Iceland and Norway. And there is a second ecotype called ecotype two, and this one are eating the marine mammals. In South Hemisphere, we have first ecotype A. They are the one who are chasing the mink whale. They are very strong and they are amazing swimmer. We have ecotype B. They are a little bit yellowish with um, 
very long saddle patch uh, with a line going up to the eye patch. And these orcas are chasing the crab eater seals in the pack ice. And we have a new ecotypes, very unknown, which are the ecotype D. And these ones are eating fish and they are living between Antarctica and a little bit further north. There is very few observation of this uh, population and we know very few about them, so uh, everything is to be discovered. It has been recently uh, observation the, uh, of this, but uh, we have almost no data, so it's impossible to know if they are eating only fish or if they have another range of prey. So these are the ecotypes and there is some other population in the world, such as in Gibraltar Strait, where they are eating tuna, in New Zealand, of course, and in other parts in the world. So we start to observe some different of the shape, uh, start to see some difference of the colors and also difference on the diet. So maybe all these orcas, they will evolve and they will be the first of a new species. This is evolution. It always has been like this in the history of life. It will always be like this as long as life will last on Earth. We also have evolved human being. We all come from apps, and because of the way of life, we have also changed the body. But not only the body has changed, the number has changed. Since the beginning, when the apps became the first humanoids and they had to, to struggle to live, first it was tribes of, of people living in some places we call native, and then the oral civilization came and we have built the houses, we have built a road, we have built everything, and it was more and more people living there. Now we know that the earth is of a crowd and um, we have grown in number from a couple of tens of thousands up to seven or almost eight billion people living on earth now. And not only the number of people, but the place we are living. We are taking more and more place. We need more and more space to build our house. First, it was some basic houses with some piece of wood to just to shelter. And it was more and more complex because of architecture. And now we have big cities. We are taking all the place. And now we are impacting evolution, the natural evolution of species. This is the reason why we need now to start to think about protecting the environment, protecting the natural habitat, protecting the forest, which is the natural habitat. A field is not a natural habitat. A field where you plant and you harvest is not a natural habitat. The ocean is a natural habitat, and this ocean we are polluting now. We are poisoning, we are taking all the food from, uh, from the ocean by overfishing, and the only thing we are giving back is plastic. So we have to think in terms of protecting this habitat in order to protect this biodiversity on Earth, because we have the power to damage, and we shouldn't. So it's up to us to decide. The time has come now to do all of this, a little thing to protect the environment. All your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orcs Sans Frontières. You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Thank you for your attention. Next video coming soon. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.